Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Coming to uh, number nine, excuse number nine. Excuse number nine also is I am too busy. But this is slightly different from the previous I am too busy. This excuse starts with I am too busy and ends with, with my studies. I am seeking ilm, I am seeking knowledge. That's why I am too busy. I am in a university in England or in, in the US and I don't have time to pray or I don't have time for any acts of ibadah. So I cannot do that. I think I am excused. And then the person will even go a step further to quote uh, a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ saying that seek ilm even if you have to go to China and then say that isn't seeking ilm itself an act of ibadah so this excuse now is a little different from the previous one now the person is throwing in a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and making it all uh, seem that it's all fair and good firstly the hadith that I've just narrated is a modu or fabricated hadith if not a daif meaning a weak hadith so the majority of the ulama, the majority of the scholars have classified this as a fabrication. This was never said by the Prophet ﷺ. So that's number one. Secondly, the hadith which is correct is uh, in Ibn Majah where the Prophet ﷺ said seeking knowledge or ilm is an obligation upon every Muslim man or woman. Now the question comes, what is this ilm? What is ilm? What is, how do we define this ilm? What is this knowledge? Now ilm here specifically since it's an obligation. If you don't do it, you are, do, you are not fulfilling a first responsibility. So when, when he said it's an obligation, this ilm means the Sharia or the Islamic law. Every Muslim man or woman must know the bare minimum Islamic teachings. Why? He must know what is halal, what is haram. He must know what he can do and what he cannot do. So this bare minimum knowledge is a first, it's an obligation on every Muslim man or woman. So this is the first interpretation and the first uh, meaning of this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which is 100% uh, authentic. The other meaning is that if you acquire any other of the worldly sciences or worldly ilms, then that ilm must connect you to Allah, otherwise it's useless. Whether you are in physics, you are in chemistry, biology, astrophysics, you name it. Whatever it is, it must connect you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you seek an ilm and it does not connect you to Allah, then that ilm is useless. You strived and struggled all your life seeking ilm, but you disbelieved in Allah. What was the point of that? An example could be a person who says that I went to Paris to learn fashion design for five years. And after that, I came back to my home country and I started designing uh, non-Sharia compliant or let's say uh, skimpy outfits for ladies. I went for five years, I was seeking ilm. Wasn't that seeking ilm in the path of Allah? That was not seeking ilm for the path of Allah. Likewise, a person who has been doing chemical engineering in terms of developing chemical warheads to mutilate and destroy nations. What kind of ilm is this? If you look at uh, the Islamic golden age and you look at all the scientists of that time, you will realize something fascinating. Not one of these scientists developed anything, any invention which went against humanity in general or even they did not destroy the natural infrastructure if they had developed canals they made sure the trees were not cut in the process or if there was damage it was it was minimal they did not develop plastics and things which could corrode and pollute and all of these things everything that they developed and designed was for the general good of mankind so they were not in a money-making business that you know because plastic is cheaper let's do that for our packaging and ruin the environment so everything that they did, they kept Allah in their minds. That whatever we design, whatever we develop, whatever innovations we make in the sciences, we will not disobey Allah in that. We will not cause a fitna in this world. But now, this is not the case. The biggest enemy of Islam during the Meccan period of the Prophet ﷺ, his name was Abu Jahl, the father of ignorance. Do you know what his name was before he was given this title by the Muslims? His name was Abu Al-Hakam, the father of wisdom. And this was the title given to him by the Arabs. 
because they thought he was very intelligent and very wise and all of those things. But the Muslims knew that with all of his intelligence and his love for the arts and poetry and all of those things, he could not connect himself to Allah. He believed in Allah. Don't get me wrong. He used to swear upon Allah. He used to say, by Allah this, by Allah that. But he did not associate his acts of ibadah solely for Allah. So his intelligence, whatever it is, is useless. And that's why he was known as the father of jahiliyyah, the father of ignorance. So knowledge that connects you to Allah is beneficial. Knowledge that takes you away from Allah is useless. Because you must remember your very purpose of existence. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That Allah did not create you for any other purpose. The main purpose for your existence is the worship of Allah. Is your obedience, is your ibadah to Allah. And if your knowledge, this ilm that you have sought for many, many years, 10 years, 20 years, if this ilm is taking you away, then this ilm was useless. This ilm actually became the cause of your destruction in the hereafter. So you must always remember who a really intelligent person is. And not be quick to say, wow, this is a very intelligent person. He does not bow his head to Allah once, but we say, oh, why, very intelligent. Mashallah, how smart he is. So we must remember who is the real intelligent person in the sight of Allah.